Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we are going to talk about the international music business. What is it like to try and chase your money all over the world? Now, if you're only living in one country right now, uh, there may be a time that you decide you want to move or you want to tour and you want to know how do you collect your performance income in the music publishing business uh, when there's so many different country lines to deal with and languages to cross over to discuss these things, right? So I've been living in Germany for about eight and a half years now. I'm originally from the US and I had a lot to learn over time uh, in order to figure out how to get my money. So now I'm going to share that with you. Ready, set, let's go. Hey, what's up everybody? Sky Deep here. And I'm a multimedia artist, audio engineer, musician, producer. I do a lot of things. Uh, among which also I've just launched my publishing company to assist artists in getting their music into film and TV productions and to help you collect your money worldwide. What's so interesting is that even after talking to lawyers and accountants and veterans in the music business, I have discovered that everyone still gets a bit hung up on the details just in conversation. We just get a little bit tongue tied because it, it really is pretty intricate and it's very mathematical. And if you're like me, I was not a big fan of mathematics in school. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I want to share with you some slides. Uh, I want to point out first and foremost that there is a sort of uh, music publishing uh, governing body, if you will. And, and I, I'm, I'm probably not using the right terms for that, but CSAC uh, is an organization that is almost like the United Nations of the music publishing world. And all of the PROs or performance rights organizations who help you collect your money as an artist they often are belonging as members to this group. Only PROs and, 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 and types of companies like that who are not actually working to exploit music can belong to this group. And they really do uh, try to set a standard worldwide to uh, make sure that artists are treated as fairly as possible around the world. But somehow, I don't know, Sometimes it's hard to follow the money trail. And so let's, let's figure this out, people. Let's, let's get in. Okay. So point number two, some countries have one organization for all types of royalty collections due to artists. And some have several different organizations that handle each of those things. Uh, as an example, in talking about the USA, uh, some of the most common performance rights organizations that we all know, well, there's really just the three main ones, right? There's ASCAP, there's BMI, and there's CSAC. And, and these groups help you collect your performance royalties. Now, Harry Fox Agency is known to chase your mechanical royalties. So these two things are different. And if you're a little confused about the difference between performance royalties and mechanical royalties, then uh, you should definitely take a look at my first video where I talk about an introduction to music publishing, where I kind of make a distinction between those two things. But additionally, in the US, there's something that a lot of people don't know about called neighboring rights income. Uh, neighboring rights has to do with even if you didn't write the song or compose the song or, or something like that, you may have sang on the song or you might have added some hand claps or used a maraca or something like that, uh, played the bongos. Well, actually, if that recording with your performance on it uh, ends up getting released and put on a record somewhere, then you should also be making money, at least in other countries. Unfortunately, in the US, for some reason, neighboring rights income is not something that there's an organization for to help you with. Uh, but if you work with a music publisher 
who is taking care of neighboring rights like mine, then you can get taken care of in other places in the world. So let's talk about that again. Let's say uh, I know that in the UK, there is a PRO called PRS. And uh, PRS handles your performance rights. But there's also another organization, which I'll put it up on the screen. I forget, it's like MC... PS or something like that. Uh, they take care of, I think, mechanical rights. Like, right, I'm not from the UK. I'm not living there. So I don't know it right off the top of my head, but I have a chart. I can share it with you later. And in Germany, there is a, a group called GEMA and they take care of your performance rights and your mechanical rights. But when it comes to neighboring rights, uh, this is handled by another organization called GEFA-L. And lastly, in Switzerland, uh, there's a company or a PRO called Suisa, and they handle everything. They do it all. And isn't that a relief for the people who get to work with them? Then you only have one place to call an office to deal with. And that's pretty cool. All right. Point number three. Percentage splits are treated differently in some places. The structure each PRO abides by is often referred to as a royalty rates distribution key. So they might not all call it precisely this, but it's uh, the word key is directly related often to the governing body of all PROs, SISAC. And uh, they have a lot of different protocols that can be followed and rules and regulations uh, on documents called keys. And I've actually downloaded a lot of them. They're like giant legal documents and I've been reading through them. And uh, yeah, so some of the PROs are abiding by sort of a, a collective decision worldwide to do a certain type of split. Now I'm going to take you to our graphs so that I can just give you a bit of an idea on how this all looks. Here we have a representation of what it could be like if you were uh, in Germany or, yeah, dealing with a German artist or you uh, have a thing that airs in Germany and uh, Gamma wants to pay out some royalties. The typical way that they look at it, and you can find this direct on their website, is that your mechanical royalties, they usually designate, unless otherwise requested by the artists directly, usually the whole song is one pie, and 60% of that, when you look here, is designated for the writer or the composers, like people who wrote the lyrics and did the music, and then the 40% is the publishing side of the track that's on mechanical royalties, which is the master recording that can be reproduced. Now, if you are the solo songwriter, then all of this uh, belongs to you, but still it's looked at often in these different types of shares. If you recorded your own recording, you own your masters, that's how it looks. Uh, if you had been on a label or working with a separate publisher, then it would be expected that this amount actually goes to them, especially if they financed the whole recording. That's in Germany. That's how the numbers look. And this on the other side is what you see for performance royalties, which you'll see it's slightly different. Uh, it's going 66.7 for the writers and composers versus 33.3% for the publishers. Now, this standard, if you see written here, is in conformity with the SISAC. Germany basically decided that, yes, they would like to participate in this European sort of uh, group approach to how they want to deal with royalties. Okay, I, let's take a look here at what it looks like in France. Sorry, I have written here Gamma, but it's not Gamma for France. It's something else, and uh, I forget what that is, but I'll put it on the screen. But when we look here, we have uh, the writer and publisher share for mechanical royalties looking like 50% on the 
on each side, very similar to the US. And this can be looked up on their website, on the website of the PRO. And again, over here in the performance royalties, actually they chose to conform with the SISAC plan. And so it's the same as what it was in Germany. And that's a different slide. And when we are looking at Suiza and Switzerland, uh, again, direct on their website, uh, you would be able to see how they deal with things. So we have three different pictures here. Uh, on the basic level, the mechanical royalties are usually split 60-40 uh, between what is normally considered the publisher share or the writer's share. Uh, then on the performance royalty side, uh, they have also chosen to adapt to the SISAC plan, as you saw in the last other slides. And down here at the bottom, we see a little bit of a different picture. We see this 50-50 picture. And that is because they, also, they have a different protocol in regards to if the publisher assumes the recording production costs uh, of the work. So this is where uh, it becomes a 50-50 thing, uh, unless of course the artists uh, have, or the record label or whoever has come up with a different deal with each other. But otherwise this is pretty much the standard deal. Uh, let's move on. Uh, and then just quickly at the US, it's pretty much just this 50-50 thing. So remember Harry Fox is doing the mechanical royalties uh, and then ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC uh, are doing uh, performance royalties 50-50. So if there were a co-publishing deal where uh, a publisher said, uh, we would like to do a 50-50 deal with you, dear artist, uh, and those are your songs, but now we will help you to shop them around and help you to make as much money as possible off of them and assist you in collecting the monies. Well, uh, it would look something like this. Uh, so 50-50 deal does not mean taking 50% of your entire pie. It actually means in this case in Germany, taking 20% of that pie. Um, and here, like that's if it's the mechanical royalties and if it's the performance royalties, then it's actually only taking 16.7% of that pie. And that's as a fee for the services that they would provide in trying to generate more money and negotiate deals for these, for the songs. Yeah. Sometimes a, a larger uh, publishing company or a big record label might say, we want a hundred percent of the publishing because we're, we're big like that. We can, we can ask for that because we're doing a lot of big things for you. And if that's the case, if they say that, then yes, they actually mean that they would take this whole 40%, right? They would not take this uh, 50, you know, they would not take 100% of all your stuff. You as the writer, you always get to keep your thing. But if the publisher sa says they want a full publishing deal, then they're gonna take this whole part here. And of course, if we go on to the US, then they would say, I would take this whole yellow section and the artist would get the whole blue section. Yeah. So uh, likewise in, in Switzerland, it is just customary. And as they mention on the website, it's one of the fairest deals that can be out there is a 50, 50 deal. And again, that 50, 50 only applies to the publisher's share. Uh, and especially if the publisher was the one who uh, paid the money to do the master recording and owns the master recording, then it's very, very typical that it would be observed as a 50-50 deal in Switzerland. And it would look like this, yellow being the publisher, blue being the artist. So and essentially the artist is still getting majority 75% of what that is. And the publisher gets compensated for having foot the bill for the whole thing. Anyway, um, this plays across the board, no matter which organization we're looking at, that is a little bit more about 
how the PROs work internationally. Uh, and there's so much more really to talk about with this, like even just the idea of like, how does the money get from one PRO to another? Well, it takes a really long time, I'll tell you that much. It takes sometimes up to a year or more, especially if you're dealing across international lines. But even if you're just dealing within your own place uh, where you live, it can take a year. So another reason that publishing companies are sometimes very helpful and useful is if you would prefer to get your money a little bit sooner, uh, perhaps they help you get your money in a year instead of in a year and a half or up to two years, who knows, if ever, because it's only theoretical that all the money actually gets where it's supposed to go. But it's nice when you have a company that can chase it up for you, who has memberships at all the societies all over the world and can get on the phone and say, hey, excuse me, Bob, where's the money? Can you let us know? Thanks. Uh, just before I go, I want to uh, share with you a couple of things. Okay, so just to show you, okay, so on the Swiss site, uh, they have some info in their blog about how uh, they do these percentages, so you're not just taking my word for it, but you're actually able to see what they say. So I can leave this link down in the description if anybody is interested in just reading that. But the thing is, is no matter where you're at, I also can show you the one for Germany. They have a page here that further details how they're doing their distribution keys or their splits. So interesting. So in my opinion, the fairest and the best way to approach all of this is that, you know, everybody gets paid for their work and for their services, but that the artists should always uh, get the majority share. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you have any info that you would like to share from the performance rights organization in your land. I'm in the business of supporting artists in getting paid and in getting their music and film and TV. So check out the website, check out all the links below, and thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next round. <laughs>